Each female produces around 20,000 eggs, and they're very sticky. The males arrive soon after the females have spawned and release their sperm in vast milky clouds. Soon, the excesses of the herring's sexual spree creates a thick white scum on the surface. Through the season, curds of sperm clog the shores for hundreds of miles, from British Columbia in the south all the way to Alaska in the north. After a few days, this gigantic spawning comes to an end, and the herring head back out to deeper waters, leaving behind them fertilized eggs plastered on every rock and strand of vegetation. They time their spawning so that two weeks later, when these eggs start to hatch, the annual plankton bloom will have reached its height and the newborn fish fry will have plenty to eat. But in the meantime, all these eggs provide food for armies of different animals, both below and above the surface. Millions of birds arrive to collect a share of the herring's bounty. Some of it is easily gathered, for millions of eggs have been washed up onto the shore. This encapsulated energy is particularly valuable to migrating birds. These surf birds are on their way to their breeding grounds in the Arctic, and they had to come down to refuel. Stranded herring eggs are just what they need. Bonaparte gulls collect the eggs just below the surface of the water. Farther out in the bay, huge flocks of ducks have gathered. They're mostly surf scoters, diving ducks, that can feed off the bottom several metres down. Ah. There are such huge quantities of eggs that even such a big animal as a bear finds it worthwhile to collect them. The spawning of the herring is a crucial event in the lives of many animals all along the coast. The whole event coincides with the plankton bloom, and within just three short weeks, it's all over. The migratory birds leave to continue their journey north. They will not come back until the herring also return next year.